Hey guys, I realize it's been a very long time, uh, what is it, nine months since I last put up a video. That is completely inexcusable. I'm not even going to try to excuse it. I've been really busy, but I'm, it's inexcusable uh, on my part. I just I got so caught up in other things, and plus my computer uh, is not fantastic at running the screen recorder and my, uh, my, um, code uh set up at the same time and so i uh just like i said there's no excuse uh, no excuse for not finishing the series so i'm hoping to be able to continue uh where we left off in our OpenGL game development uh tutorial series um because it still looks like and, and every time i i get on and I, I got on there earlier today and i looked and i saw people commenting that they that, that it was a that they said it was the best series they found which i think i in my opinion i think there are some better ones out there uh especially because they have more episodes out but um so yeah i wanted to get back into it i'm going to try to be consistent this time i know i said that last time but i'm going to try to upload episodes consistently um but yeah let's get let's just jump right in uh, last time, uh, for those of you who don't remember where we left off since it was, it's, it's been a very long time, uh, in our last episode we were talking about mapping, um, coordinates to the screen, uh, in a sort of abstract way, so that we're not mapping directly to pixels on the screen, but we're using units, um, to try and, uh, kind of abstract ourselves away from the resolution of the user's screen. Now, there are different ways, like I said last time, there are different ways to abstract it, the way that we're doing it is uh, a width priority system uh, by which um, the we, we, we are concerned with having a specified number of units wide and the units height will depend on the aspect ratio that we want the game to uh, at which we want the game to run um, or rather I guess the aspect ratio of the user screen in other words different user screens uh, the width is always going to be the same. In other words, you'll have 10, for example, what we've got, uh, I think, in our rendering class is 10 units wide, uh, which means that uh, there will be 10 units which is that are equal in uh, pixel size to the width of the user's screen divided by 10, because there are going to be 10 in the width of the user's screen. Uh, the height will then be however many units of that. Uh, so, for example, if they've got a, a screen that's 100 pixels wide, which no, no one has a screen that's 100 pixels wide, that's absurdly small, uh, but each unit, if we you had 10 units, would be 10 pixels, and so we've got 10 pixel chunks. So then the number of units tall is however many 10 pixel chunks fit into uh, the height of the user screen. Now, I went, I went over this last time in the last video, I just wanted to recap it before we uh, continue today. Today what we want to do is we want to make it where you can set the uh, screen to be full screen. And uh, now when, if you encounter any problems, there, there are two types of problems that we can encounter when we're working on this. There's going to be Java based errors, those are the ones that uh, have to do with the code that we're writing, and there's going to be funky looking things like this right here, uh, what, what I have down here in my uh, um, in my console uh, view, and those are errors coming from Joggle, uh, because Joggle is uh, running using native uh, native binaries for whatever system you're using. Here I'm on macOS, so I've got macOS X Universal as the binaries, and I think in the uh, first or second episode of this series I went over how to set this up, but uh, those errors are errors coming from Joggle itself, and I'm not fully sure how Joggle works internally. I only know how the uh, Java code works, so hopefully we, if we get any problems, which hopefully we don't, they're ones that I can solve, uh, and I, I will do my best to answer questions in the comments uh, if, if I know the answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and make our window full screen. And the way we're going to do that is here uh, in our renderer class in our init method, where we initialize everything, um, we've got window.setVisibleTrue. Right before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and set the window to be full screen. I'm going to do that by saying window.setFullScreen. True. It's really that simple. So we just say window.setFullScreen true. Now if we run the code, well first off, I'm going to comment out the code so you can see what it looks like when it runs normally uh, based on the code that we had before. We run it and this happens. We get a little window with our little box inside it. Uh, now I'm going to delete window.setFullScreen. Uh, no, I'm going to delete the commenting 
uh, for that. So now we've got this line uh, uncommented, and we run it again, and we get a nice full screen window. Notice it's automatically resized to the size of my screen. Now, hopefully it does that on everyone else's computers, because like I said, I'm running Mac OS, uh, and if there's anything different about the native binaries, um, I'm not going to really know how to solve that, uh, that kind of problem. But for me, this is what works. And part of what I can do here, uh, I'm going to set, since, since we, when I make something full screen, if I get bars on the sides because of a, because it doesn't scale properly, or bars on the top, letter boxes or pillar boxes, uh, those will appear black on mine, I think. So what I want to do to make it so that uh, we can tell exactly where the boundaries of our window are, or is, I'm going to go into uh, the event listener class and find uh, where we set the clear color right here. Uh, in the init method, we set the clear color to be black, basically. Red is 0, green is 0, blue is 0, and alpha is 1. So a fully opaque black uh, image. So let's set it to be red by say, setting red to 1. So we've got GL clear color 1001. This will be a fully opaque red color in the background. And so when we start it up, you see we get a fully uh, opaque red color and our little blue square in the middle. So that's it for this episode. I know we didn't cover a whole lot. I just wanted to you know, explain uh, that I want to get started working on this again, and I wanted to show you how to make it full screen like that. Also, um, real quick, right here, in the last episode, we commented out window dot set resizable false. Uh, we can go ahead and uncomment that and make it uh, set resizable uh, false again. And if we run it, uh, it should still resize properly whenever we do the uh, set full screen thing. It's just that set resizable keeps the user from resizing the window, which is fine for our purposes. But actually, if it's full screen, there's no, they can't like grab a corner of the window and change it anyway. But I just do this anyway so that uh, it doesn't mess with the resolution and lead to unpredictable. You know, like in a game, usually you get options as to what screen, re what resolution you want to run the game at. Uh, you don't just let the user freely click and drag because it might lead to unpredictable results. Like, what if they click and drag and make the window, you know, 10 times taller than it is wide, like make it an inch wide and 10 inches tall? It just You can't account for things like that. Uh, so I like to set it set resizable false so that I can just give the user a predefined set of options for what screen size they want. Or, in most cases, I just make the game full screen and have it automatically detect the size of the user's screen. That's a convenient way to do it. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'm going to try to uh, put out a new video as often as possible. I, I just want to get back into it again, and I like I said, I've got no excuse for taking as long as I did to get back to this series. So thanks a lot to ev everyone who's been who have been watching the videos and who have subscribed so far, and I look forward to uh, making the next video because I really want I really have no idea where I'm going to go with the actual game here. I just want to make a quick make a a game out of this. Uh, series so that when the series is over, I hope we have a project that we can, you know, look at and actually, you know, say, hey, I made, I actually made a game here because I think it, it's, it, I really think learning programming is so much better whenever you can show something for it. Like when you're done, you've got something that you can actually, uh, you know, you can actually see the results. Uh, so that's why I want to make a whole series out of making this game. Uh, and I don't even know what the game's going to be like. So again, thank you very much for watching, uh, and I will see you in the next video.